beginning of our Lenten celebration, <coughs> and I was thinking on the way over well, how blessed we are to have this kind of technology that in the current crisis we are able to share with all our brothers and sisters the sacrifice of the Mass and make our spiritual communion. How blessed we are indeed. The Lord never abandons his people. And so we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And so, my friends, we come in a more intensive way before this wondrous Lord Jesus who in these great 40 days offers us special forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you cast out demons. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you cured the sick. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and may he bring all of us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, that we may walk eager, eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O oh my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Sentinels wait for the dawn. Let it 
Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the spirit, through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And this is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to death but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. And after this, he said to the disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she meant to greet him, and Mary sat at home. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. And Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, 
even if they die, will live. Do you believe this? And Jesus said to him, and she said to Jesus rather, yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. And so the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have come and done something to this man so that he would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone lay across it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha said, the dead man's sister said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. And so they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seeing what he had done, began to believe in him. My sisters, my brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Today I'd like to share with you some, um, some thoughts that, and reflections that I've had in the last while since um, this crisis has reared its ugly head. The first of, first of all, um, it's the first time certainly I can remember, and I'm sure many of you can, could remember, that churches have never been closed. And it's a powerful reflection to realize that we had no access to the Eucharist. And so it ought to, in this desert experience, except through this technology, we ought to be aware of more and more of the gift of the Eucharist and, how, and our longing recognize that it indeed uh, it is a gift. It's a gift unto eternal life. And so also we pray for vocations to the priesthood so that the Eucharist might be available in many sections of the world in which there are no priests. So let us be grateful for the gift of the Eucharist and pray that in so many, so little time, we might be able to indeed enjoy all of its fruits. Second thing I'd like to reflect on is um, a few weeks ago we celebrated the uh, great solemnity of St. Joseph. And uh, I... uh, reflecting on this as well. His life was filled with crises. We are not the only ones. I, um, he led, a, in a sense, a very difficult life. First and foremost, uh, he was asked to accept a, a woman who he was engaged to uh, but was pregnant. And particularly in Jesus' day, it was a cause for someone to be stoned. But Joseph, in obedience, he had, accepted her and said yes to God's will. 
our whole lives. So, to carry this out. The second thing is, again, he was asked to dream because of persecution to become refugees. And so the Lord asked him to take the family and move to a foreign land, a foreign culture, uh, and to live there until, until the persecution ended. And so Joseph took his family down to Egypt. It must have been a very trying time for this family. It wasn't like getting on a train and going to Chicago. It was a perilous journey. And finally, they arrived and, arrived and lived in a, a, a wholly, whole different culture, language. But again, Joseph was obedient, and the Lord was with him. We have many examples then of the fidelity and the obedience of Joseph's to God's will. And so he encourages us also to listen closely to the Lord and be empowered to carry out his will. I was thinking um, dreamers as those not quite connected. You know. But Joseph is a dreamer. He experienced two powerful dreams. And in those dreams, the Lord asked him. And like Mary, he said yes. And so salvation was indeed able to happen. The other thing is the God. This wonderful exchange between the women and Jesus. It's a curious gospel because Jesus um, deliberately delays his uh, journey down to uh, Judea, to where uh, the sisters and Lazarus lived. And he says it was for the glory of God. I wonder what through the sisters' mind. Well, they, they, you know, absolutely challenged Jesus. If you had been here, you know, my brother, Martha, would, my brother would not have died. So there's a real challenge to Jesus. And Jesus then proceeds to the miracle. He said, if you believe in me, you will never die. And finally, through this whole process, Mary comes to believe. I love, I love that phrase. Mary comes to believe in Jesus as God's Son and Messiah. Beautiful. Beautiful interchange and... Uh, so the question is, so too, do we believe in Jesus? Do we believe that he is the Christ, the Messiah, and that life here, while it might end, is only an entrance way into eternal life? So Jesus questions us during the period of Lent. Good question. Do you believe? And do you believe in me? The last thing was uh, that struck me about the gospel episode, well, the raising of Lazarus, of course, it's an incredible miracle. But you know, uh, Lazarus was to die again. What Jesus speaks about was transforming death into the gateway or portal into eternal life. And so that's what Jesus offers us portal through death into eternal life. And so death's sting has been removed from us. And while we certainly grieve for our loved ones, we take great comfort in the fact that because of Jesus' own death and resurrection, we indeed uh, will achieve eternal life. Notice all the parallels own resurrection. Eh? It's been dead for Lazarus for But uh, did you notice they, they, he commanded, let the stone be moved. And uh, in, the, in the resurrection appearances, of course, it's the angels who moved the stone. There's all kinds of parallels here. So do we believe? 
to believe in any kind of crisis, that the Lord has not abandoned us. There was the end of a reading not too long ago. I don't know whether it was the first reading, a daily reading, or the psalm. I can't remember. But the last line really struck me. The last line of that was, is God with us or not? Is God in our midst or not? I think the present crisis really does challenge us all to believe that God indeed is still with us. The final thing, oh, fire, I keep saying the final thing. I can, more and more, the Gospels are so rich, you, you know. There is no final thing. The other thing is that there are hopes all around us, even in the midst of this crisis. All kinds of, as I left, um, I'm from the, a Brazilian, and so uh, we live, from Catholic Central, so we live in community. So as I was leaving our residence, I noticed the trees around us, right by my apartment, probably can't see this, but um, the trees are, are beginning to bud. There, there's a beginning of growth. And I couldn't help but think even nature herself is telling us, not only is there a fullness of life here under God's incredible sun and warmth, but also uh, eternal life as well. So the signs are all around us of God's faithfulness and all we need to do is trust him. He gave his son so that we might live and live forever. And for this, we ought to be very, very grateful, sisters and brothers. And so I invite you to stand and make our response in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. And for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so today we gather all our longings, especially in this Lenten time, such a powerful season of grace, and we present our longings to our Heavenly Father. For the needs of the Universal Church, St. Patrick Parish, and in particular, for all the parishioners of St. Patrick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. That all leaders and members of the church may be graced with the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that world leaders may be helped by God in putting 
aside selfish agendas, and seek justice and equality for the people under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those who are in mourning may be consoled by God in their grief and made confident in the hope of resurrection for their loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all the members of the faith community may receive the mercy of God for themselves and with his help offer it to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord. our prayer. That our beloved dead and all those who have died may know the joy of, and fullness of life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the homebound that they may be healed by the loving touch of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. I'd like to end with the uh, prayer uh, composed by our Holy Father in the midst of this ep epidemic. And he gives us over to Our Lady. O Mary, you shine continually on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with a steadfast faith. You, salvation of the Roman people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide so that as you did in the Cana of Galilee. Joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He took our sufferings upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas we who are put to the test, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Patrick, pray, pray, for, pray us. for us. And so pray, my friends, that this our Lenten offering may indeed be acceptable in the sight of our great and loving God.
And so hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, You've moved human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, and adversities join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand that you extend to sinners, and the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, You brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might live for one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you now to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. Father, a Father, for when about to give his life to set us free, and Jesus reclined at table, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, 
confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. So celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer to you what you bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Ellen our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. And you have gathered us near uh, here around the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, including blessed Solanus Casey of Detroit, and with all our brothers and sisters and all those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So, brothers and sisters, let us now turn once again to the Father and pray for that gift of forgiveness of sins and pray as Mary's Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, look rather on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace and the joy of the Lord Jesus be with all of you.
loved us to the very end. And blessed are those who even now are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And so may the sharing among us, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive. I invite you all in that uh, moment of silence as the Archbishop invites us to uh, be aware of our contact and relationship and presence of the Lord Jesus in our spiritual communion. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, I leave you with that question from the uh, reading several weeks ago. Is the Lord in our midst or not?
I think he is. Go in the peace of the Lord Jesus.